Let's get to those top picks. Number one name, Walt Disney. Yeah, this is uh, this is a name that I like a lot. Um, you know, just recently reported um, quarterly results that were really, really strong. And what you're seeing within this business is, you know, that their parks business is performing exceptionally well. You know, attendance is up, per capita spending is up, and it's just doing unbelievable. And then their direct-to-consumer business, you know, with the Disney Plus, um, you know, subscriber growth has been great, but operating profits have been weak. And I think on the during their most recent corner, you really saw that this is a business that's going to turn the corner, um, you know, sometime in the next year in 2024. So I think, you know, if you look at Disney and the potential upside in the shares, you know, it's pretty attractive investment in this environment and lots of value. Okay. Um, yeah, interesting there. Um, it's trading very much on the streaming war. So are, are you not concerned, though, that it's as more and more companies break into this? For example, Walmart str struck a deal with Paramount this week in the United States. It's just going to be such a crowded space streaming. Crowd, you know, and, and yeah, that's the thing. And streaming itself is in this is you know the economics are great mm -hmm. and it's very very competitive but what disney has is its unique advantage they're one of the few firms who does exceptionally well creating original content mm -hmm. and if you look at their product portfolio that's why their subscriber growth has been so strong and then coming up this december you know they're going to be announcing uh, an ad supported model and they're going to be um, you know, raising prices. So I think this will be a great test of this business because, you know, if if they're able to get those price increases through, you know, they they do something that's very, very unique that not a lot of people can, which is create that original mm -hmm. content. And I think that's what gives them the edge longer term. They just had to figure out a point when they were going to uh, transition to direct to consumer. And they, they took their time, but they did it very really quickly once they once they decided. Chartwell Retirement Residences. Yeah, so this is one, um, you know, uh, for anybody looking for income, I think this is a really, really attractive opportunity. You know, um, you know what Chartwell does is it does private pay kind of retirement living uh, for seniors. And if you look at kind of the occupancy that, that they got hit during the pandemic, oc occupancy was down because people couldn't move in. And if you look at, you know, some, some really good potential catalysts to drive the share price higher, um, you know, occupancy right now is around 75%. You know, it's been trickling up month after month. Um, so I think you've got some really good upside on occupancy and you've also got, so got some good upside on their um, uh, development pipeline. So in terms of new residences coming online. So I think those two things should help to drive FFO growth which would be uh, pretty, uh, pretty strong for the shares. And then if you, if you think of it, you know, that you're getting paid almost 6% to wait, you know, it, it, it's, it's an income stock, yes, but it, but it has a reasonable growth profile. So I think, you know, for people looking for, um, you know, a little bit of income and a little bit of growth, Chartwell is a, a pretty attractive opportunity. And your final idea, KKR, the private equity giant. Yes, and so I, maybe I spoke a little bit about you know this space earlier, but this is a name that I really really like. You know, mm -hmm. global private equity operator, massive amount of um, money under management. Uh, also, a very very large amount of that capital is sticky. You know, more than ninety percent of the money they manage has a duration longer than than eight years. And so you know they manage five hundred billion in assets under management. They have about one hundred and fifteen in dry powder. If you look at a company going into a, a tough time economically. They've got the capital to, to swoop in and buy assets at great prices. And they've also got, um, you know, a really, really attractive valuation uh, today. So I think this is, this is a, um, you know, a, a great long-term grower. What about Onyx, our big private equity player here? Are you interested in them? I have owned Onyx in the past and, you know, um, over, you know, the last several years, you know, I had shifted out of Onyx and the two that I own on behalf of clients are Brookfield and KKR. Um, Brookfield has a very, very big bent, you know, towards real estate and things that look like real estate where KKR has, um, you know, a big presence in China and a big focus on um, buyouts. So I think, you know, they're a slightly different mix, but what you get in both of them is that um, principal investing? You know, they invest their shareholder capital in those deals as well to kind of enhance returns, mm -hmm. and that's where I why I went to those ones versus um, you know, say something like a Blackstone or something like an Onyx that has a little bit more of a niche focus. Let's leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Thanks for having me.